It's always been and it always will be a bittersweet moment together in a place like this for an occasion like this. On the one hand, Scripture reminds us in the Revelation, blessed are those who die in the Lord. They rest from their labor. The Apostle Paul said with the same spirit, and there was some enthusiasm in his writing. He said, if I am absent from the body, I am home with the Lord. And yet at the same time, we remember that when Jesus' best friend Lazarus died, of course he wept. And that's the way grief is. Sometimes we feel like the grief takes us all over the map. Some days we wake up in the throes of grief and we have hope and peace and assurance and we feel like that I can get up the next day and I can go on and it will be fine. And then the very next day we get up and we feel like that we have the weight of the world on our shoulders and that we will never be able to have a peaceful day for the rest of our days. So how do you handle all that? Well, the first thing that you have to do is you have to own your emotions. And that's the way grief is. That's the way grief has always been. So we own our emotions and then we declare our faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. And we are reminded of what scripture says and it gets us through all of the emotions related to grief. For lo, I'm with you always, even to the end of the age. Come unto me, all you that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding, but in all your ways acknowledge him, and he will make straight your paths. So the Bible reminds us that even though we go through grief in a lot of different ways, that God is active in all of them. So I would encourage us to be active as well. You know, the real grieving begins after the funeral. And so there are some old school things that we have done and perhaps were taught by our parents and grandparents to do them like to, to make the cobbler, to write the note, to make the visit. And if you've done those things already, good for you. But I would encourage you after the funeral that you still make the call, make the phone call, drop the note, make the visits. And when you do those things and you're active and the Lord being active, then you learn indeed that what the scripture says is true. He does immeasurably more than we could ever ask or imagine. Thanks be to God.
not long after coming to First Baptist to serve as senior adults, I wanted to interview, uh, highlight one of the senior adults that was involved in ministry. And there are many I could have chosen, but I settled on Dolly Fritz. And primarily the reason I settled on interviewing her and putting it down on Facebook uh, was the unique ministry she had at 85 years of age and still serving with the youth, with the teenagers, along with Steve Coleman, and had been at that many years. And uh, she was an invaluable asset uh, there with those teenagers because of her great smile. I really, I can't imagine Dolly without that smile that she had that was warm and welcoming and just embraced people any time anyone came around her. And the Lord only knows how many young lives were impacted for all eternity by Dolly Fritz and her warmth and her love and care and concern for them. She will be missed by many people. So in a time like this, and Pastor Bill has already talked about the reality of grief and it is a part of losing someone that is having someone pass on into eternity before us uh, that we deeply care about. And so in such a time, there's nothing better we can do than go to the Word of God, the Scriptures, for their truth and, and their promises. You know, Dolly was blessed with great attitude, blessed with longevity of life. But regardless of how long the Lord may allow us to live, the body begins to weaken and uh, we have our physical material limits. But I want to remind us today, as the scriptures will remind us, that the reality is while our inner pers outer person uh, is growing weaker, the inner person in Jesus Christ is growing stronger and greater. That's the greatest part of all of us. So I want us to listen to a passage from 2 Corinthians chapter 4, the latter part of chapter 4 and the first part of chapter 5. Because Paul is, is recounting uh, some of the challenges of life that he's facing, but the hope that he has and what he says here about his life is true about Dolly. It's true about all of us in Jesus Christ. And so he says this under the leadership of the Holy Spirit. He says in chapter 4, Therefore, we do not lose heart, but though our outer man person is decaying, yet our inner man is being renewed day by day. For a momentary light affliction is producing for us an eternal weight of glory far beyond all comparison. While we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are are eternal. For we know that if the earthly tent, and Paul was a tent maker, we know if the earthly tent, which is our house, is torn down, we have a building from God, a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. For indeed in this house we groan, longing to be clothed with our dwelling from heaven, inasmuch as we, having put it on, will not be found naked. For indeed while we were in this tent, we groaned, being burdened, because we do not want to be unclothed, but to be clothed, so that what is mortal will, have, will be swallowed up by life. Now he who prepared us for this very purpose is God, who gave to us the Spirit as a pledge. Therefore, being always of good courage, and knowing that while we are at home in the body, we are absent from the Lord, we walk by faith and not by sight. We are of good courage, I say, and prefer rather to be absent from the body and to be at home with the Lord. Dolly is absent in body here, but she is at home in the Lord's presence today. Let's pray. Father, we do thank you for Dolly Fritz and uh, her family, and such a, a precious lady, such a witness with her smile and her attitude and her love. And thank you for the lives that she impacted so significantly especially her own family. So we ask today that the truth of the hope that we have in Jesus Christ will sustain, will encourage, will cause us to live with hope. And in our time together, may we celebrate her life as we should and hold her to hope in Jesus Christ that is ours. In his name we pray. Amen.
If you've heard me officiate a funeral before, you've probably heard me say something that sounds a little bit like this, that one of the most difficult parts of preaching a funeral for a believer and someone who is ardent in her beliefs, like Dolly, is being able to find the correct scripture passage to read. There are so many from which you could choose and all would apply very distinctly to Dolly's life and her journey. But probably the best thing to do today is to read the text that was her favorite. She's probably like all the rest of us, depending upon the season in her life, um, she had different scripture verses that she enjoyed that spoke to her. But this one stood the test of time. It's the 46th Psalm, the 10th verse that was set to music. God says, be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. We've gathered this afternoon to celebrate the life and the ministry of Dolly Fritz. I don't know if you're like I am, but it surprised me that Dolly was 92 years old. I'm not exactly sure what 92 looks like, but I'm pretty sure that Dolly did not look 92 years old. The enduring picture that I will have in my mind and in my heart from this day forward about Dolly is that there is this beautiful lady, beautifully dressed, not a hair out of place, and an ear-to-ear -ear smile. And I think that is an enduring picture for all of us because the world needs more Dolly. It's hard for us to imagine that this sweet, kind, wonderful, thoughtful, winsome lady is not here any longer. Now, as we said a little earlier, there are a number of ways that we can try to grasp grief, and I've always been kind of partial to something that Dr. Seuss once said when he said, don't cry because it's over, smile because it happened. And I think that's true that you and I one day will cease crying and we will smile a wonderful smile, not nearly as good as Dolly's. But we will have that smile and we'll recollect all those stories and they will buoy us in our journey. But that may not be the case now. There will be tears and there will be difficulties and there will be sleepless nights. But for those who are in Christ, and Dolly was. Paul had the greatest piece of advice, the apostle. He said, we don't grieve like those without hope. So we gather today with great hope and we will walk out of here with hope and encouragement, not because Dolly was such a good girl, and she was, or because she had such a sweet smile, and she did. We will walk out of here with hope and encouragement and enthusiasm because Dolly had a relationship with Jesus Christ. And the song that she sang over and over again for the duration of her life's journey, my hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly lean on Jesus' name. On Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand. All other ground is sinking sand. So we stand on firm ground today. And we will leave walking on firm ground because we know exactly where Dolly is and we know that she is happy because if she is absent from the body, she is home, home with the Lord. So we're left to grief, but we're also left to celebrate, which is part of grief. I think of the many things that we can celebrate about Dolly's life, we have to celebrate her personality. You likely know the story of Barnabas in the New Testament. Barnabas has always been known as an encourager. Now we've called him Barnabas so long and pastors have referred to him as Barnabas for so long, normally we don't even think about that being his name. 
His name is Joseph. But everybody called him Barnabas because literally it means the son of encouragement or encouragement, and that's what he did. He invested in people's lives, and he spoke to them, and he embraced them, and he took them places they never thought that they could go. And you may remember perhaps the highlight is that when this terrorist by the name of Paul became a believer and wanted to get in the church, and the church wasn't so sure about this man, Barnabas vouched for him. And if Barnabas vouched for him, that's all they needed. Dolly invested in people. In fact, I think we could probably say that her hobby was to collect people. A nurse told Vicki in the journey, she said, in my nursing career, she said, I've had to live by, I can't get emotionally involved with my patients. Because if I do, then I'm not going to be doing this very long. Because I'll burn out, I'll be overwhelmed, I'll be taken apart. So as a rule, I do not get close to my patients. You know where I'm going. Dolly was the exception. She said that Dolly was in her soul. And my goodness, we get it, don't we? I mean, the first time we all met Dolly, wherever we were when we met her, we fell madly in love with her. And at some point in being with Dolly and seeing her ministry, you suddenly came to that epiphany that Dolly was no accident. You may remember the Old Testament story of Esther, who it's a strange and wonderful story. This little Jewish girl grows up to be the queen. And during her reign as the queen, someone asked that the Jewish people be slaughtered her people. And it was her uncle who actually became her father because she was orphaned. He got word to her. He said, you have been placed in this position in the palace for a time such as this. I truly believe that Dolly Fritz was placed in our midst for a time such as this. Because wherever she went, she always cast and spread a little bit of light. Do you remember what Jesus told his disciples? He said, let your light shine among men. That's what Dolly did. Wherever she went, she just brought a little light, even in the darkest, the most dreary of circumstances. When Dolly walked into a room, it lit up with the light and love of the Lord. Dolly was a card sender. Birthday, Christmas, just because. Some people might say that that's not that big a deal and I would disagree vehemently with them because here's the truth and we all know it whether we talk about it much or not. There are times in all of our lives that we feel like a very small grain of sand on a very large beach. In other words, nobody knows who we are, nobody cares who we are, and we feel very small in such a big world. And inevitably, that day we would go to the mailbox and there would be a card from Dolly. And you would know that you mattered to one person. And it made all the difference. Justin Woosley, one of her best friends. And a lot of people would say that about Dolly and about Justin. They remind me a lot of each other in that they just love people and they love to serve. Justin said that Dolly made a point of praying for him and for everybody. And then once she was asked to pray for somebody, she would come back and ask how he or she were doing or how the situation was. And if you said, it's all worked out. Dolly was like, uh, there's another one. A prayer that the Lord has answered. Dolly never forgot who she was or what she was. She was a missionary. 
Many of us grew up in elementary school learning about the legend of Johnny Appleseed who went all over creation as the legend stands, just planting apple trees. That was her calling. She went all about the land, planting the light and the love of God. Donnie Fritz was a missionary. But we also celebrate her focus. You likely remember that iconic New Testament story about Mary and Martha. Jesus is in their home, Lazarus' home as well, and he is teaching and everybody is there and they want to hear him and Mary is enraptured by his teaching and Martha is making sure that everybody has, and this is my paraphrase, of course, that everybody has enough coffee and enough to eat and everybody's comfortable and everybody's happy. And when you read the story the first time and you learn that Martha becomes upset with Mary, we relate to that and we think that she has reason to be mad at Mary. But the surprise is that Jesus says that Mary is to be commended and Martha needs to change. Somebody even wrote a book once, Being Mary in a Martha World. It's easy to be Martha, isn't it? Tunnel vision, too busy. It's almost like gravity that draws us into just being busy and not stopping. Dolly had no trouble with being a Mary in a Martha World. You remember Peter wanted to get out and walk on the water toward Jesus. Jesus called him out of the boat. And as long as he kept his eyes on Jesus, he stayed above the water. But once he started looking at the waves and sensing the wind, he began to doubt and began to sink. Dolly always looked where she needed to look. So it kept her focused in what she needed to do. I have no idea how long she's been a member of First Baptist Church. She's been a member for a long time. Now, you know, just like I know, that churches are like people. They have personalities and seasons. And so she went through at First Baptist, like every church, she went through some really, really, really good times, went through some tough times, and somewhere in between, mostly. But she never wavered. She was always a supporter always an encourager, a pastor's delight because she kept her eyes on Jesus. My buddy Steve Coleman is back there who was the youth pastor at First Baptist. And Dolly was the first face that a lot of youth saw when they walked into Sunday school. Now conventional wisdom would say that somebody Dolly's age would age out of that ministry. But Dolly did not serve conventional wisdom. She served the Father. And at the most vulnerable time in a lot of people's lives, and all of us, I don't care how old we are, we remember how tough it was to be in that age range. I mean, how wonderful would it be to step into a situation where you might not be sure, am I going to be accepted? Am I going to be loved? Am I going to fit in? And all of a sudden you see Dolly Fritz. My three children grew up under her ministry, walking into youth Sunday school and seeing her first. And so when I told them that Dolly had died, they all had the same response. And I, I can't do it justice, but it was like, oh. And then there was this moment of quiet. And then they all said, she was the sweetest lady That's the impact that Dolly Fritz made. If she met you one time, she remembered your name. If you told her something about your life, she remembered what you told her. The Apostle Paul once said to his very favorite church, the church at Philippi, he said, whatever's true, whatever's noble, whatever's right, whatever's pure, whatever's lovely, whatever's praiseworthy, think on such things. And often we end there when we read it or we quote it. 
But that's not where it ends. He says to the church at Philippi, put those into practice. And that's what Dolly Fritz did. But the greatest passion she had was for her family. Sherman's been gone too long. <clears throat> Dolly would tell you that in so many ways, life was never the same after Sherman died. If you asked her after he passed away, are you married? The answer was yes, because she belonged to Sherman and Sherman belonged to her. And so I was telling Vicki on the phone the other day, when you said one of their names, you automatically said the other. And so it was a match made in heaven. And I told this at Sherman's funeral, that their first date, this little boy from Waco and this little girl from Nashville was to the drive-in. And at the drive-in, Sherman listened to a University of Kentucky basketball game. <laughs> Dolly always knew what she was getting into. But it was indeed a match made in heaven and Vicki and Lyndon. You were her greatest gifts. She was proud of you every day. And I've said this about a lot of people, and I'm grateful that I have. I've been a pastor for a long time. I've sat in my office in some place, and I've had people far older than us weep because they were never sure whether their parents loved them or wanted them. Every night when you all went to bed, you knew that you were loved, you were wanted, and your biggest encourager and your best cheerleader was your mother. But in turn, you all brought such blessings to her. As she got older and age began to set in and things began to decline, she knew that she didn't have to worry about whether she was going to be taken care of. And you all told her how much she meant to you, how good a mother she had been, and told her it was okay to go home, to be free of this body. And so when we're told in scripture that when Christ sets you free, you are free indeed. And so Dolly was set free and we celebrate that. Finally, and I close with this, we celebrate her faith. The greatest relationship that Dolly Fritz had was with Jesus wasn't with Sherman, it wasn't with her girls, it wasn't with any one of us. The most important relationship that she had was with Jesus. There was a time in her life when she invited Jesus Christ to be Lord and Savior of her life. It changed everything. It changed her past, it changed her present, it changed her future, it changed her eternity, it changed her relationships. And one of the reasons that this text in the 46th Psalm was her favorite was she knew how to be still and to know that he was God. And she knew two things. She knew that after she became a believer that Jesus was going to walk with her every place she went, every step she took, everything she encountered, she knew that she would never again do it alone. but she also understood something else. And that was that when she breathed her last breath, because of her relationship with Jesus, her next breath would be drawn in heaven. So every day that she lived with Christ, she learned what the apostle Paul learned and told the church at Rome. He said, I know, I'm convinced that neither death nor life nor angels nor demons nor anything else in all creation will separate us from the love of God through Jesus Christ the Lord. So today we can celebrate. The apostle Paul said in this earthly body, we see God in heaven through a glass darkly. But when you are a believer, and you breathe your last breath and your next one is in heaven, the Bible says, then you see him face to face. So indeed, 
She may be absent from the body, but today she is home with the Lord.
Would you pray with me? Father, as we leave here today, we truly imagine ourselves having the torch passed to us so that we might be able to live as light in this world and that we would follow your command to let our light shine before men. God, we thank you that Dolly has been such a part of our lives for such a long time. And so, God, we thank you that for those of us who have accepted you as Lord and Savior, that one day we will have the privilege of seeing her again, not because of her, not because of us, but because of you. Thank you, God.